Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Darren Ganji here with my good buddy, Sean Cole. And we're here today to review the VRC Mark II <laughs> by Bob Earl. We had Bob Earl in the studio here a couple weeks ago. And some of you may remember we did a review back in July of 2009. And it was of the VRC Mark I. Okay. And that was on a segment that we had dubbed Sim Rigs Under $1,000. Yeah, actually you did a whole bunch of them. We did. We did. <laughs> we did. And we really didn't know. We, we Actually, it was a very thorough review, but our scoring scale was thumbs up, thumbs middle, or thumbs down. And, uh, you know, when I go back and watch that review, you know, we didn't put it on the rev scale. And I think of the, you know, where we put it and looking at the pros and cons, it probably equaled about a seven if we were to put it on today's rev scale. I agree. And anyone who wants to check out that review, it's at our website. Just search Bob Earl, you'll find the review or Simrig section. Yep, go in the Simrig section, it's definitely in there. So we're back to the Mark II here. And Mark II has two major changes. Mm -hmm. One being the seat we've got here. And actually, there's something else that we've got that we didn't have last time, and that's that monitor stand right there. <laughs> Uh, but that's not part of the review here. Well, it is part of the review, but the biggest changes in the Mark II are the seat. Sure. Before it had a dune buggy seat. Right, which, yeah, this is a big upgrade. And if you guys watched our grandstand review and some of our other reviews, this is identical to that same seat we've been talking about. So it's mm -hmm. a very generic racing seat style seat. Also offers a lot more comfort and adjustability. Another big change looking from the Mark I to the Mark II is the new center knob here or the secondary center knob here that actually is going to allow you a little more stability. Yeah, it definitely gets rid of some of that side to side wobble. There's actually three changes. You have a much larger pedal plate yep. and that allows a little more freedom for movement and it's got some extra holes as well. Absolutely. Now the whole VRC not including the monitor stand or the shifter mount goes for 349 so 350 bucks okay not including shipping if you don't want the seat you can just get the frame did mm -hmm. you know that no i didn't yeah actually. for 175 bucks <laughs> okay and if you just want the seat let's say you have a vrc1 and you want to upgrade to the seat or if you want a seat for a different rig that you have 200 bucks for the seat. The shifter mount goes for 45 bucks additional. And this goes for $100. So I guess with everything here, the whole rig, the monitor stand, the shifter mount, you're looking at $495, is that yep. right? Yep, right under 500 bucks, not Plus including shipping. shipping. Yeah. <laughs> and shipping, you pretty much ship everywhere in the world. Uh, there's just a few places that they don't, but in the States it's Bob Earl, but he has some affiliates that ship outside the US. So that's a pretty good deal considering everything's included. Uh, also comes with Velcro straps to wrap everything up nicely. All the hardware to hard mount, either your Fanatic or Logitech wheel and pedals. Uh, also says that it's compatible with Thrustmasters if you drill it. We didn't do that, so we just ran what we had that, that bolted right up to it. So heel riser is also included. Couldn't forget that. It's like a, a cushion. Uh, and a little bit of assembly was required. As a matter of fact, we haven't done one of our assembly videos in a long time. So, so time for it? I think it's about time for one. Here it is. As you can see, there's actually very little assembly required. I mean, it's pretty much out of the box, put it together, put it together. and you're up and running. And that leads me to the adjustment points. You do have a bit of adjustment. The whole pedal plate to seat relationship adjusts with two little pins that lock it into position, and then you can slide it. You've got knobs down here that will tighten it down. You've got the ability to move the shifter forward and back on one of these sliders. You've got the ability to move the wheel deck up and down, but it does kind of move forward and back with up and down by its design. Yep. And now with the addition of the new seat, you can also recline the seat a little bit, which is nice. Yep. Uh, once you've got it all adjusted, this is probably, we mentioned this in our last review, one of the lowest sitting rigs that we've tried. The rig also is probably the best or most realistic in regards to the racing position. And a matter of fact, a few weeks back, Bob Earl was here. He tried to design this in as close to a real racing position as possible. 
And one of the things that he wanted to do was to have the brake pedal vertical when you were on full brake or when you're hitting the, the threshold. Right. And I guess that's more realistic in a real race car versus having the brake start here and pushing it past that vertical point. Sure. And you're talking about a rig that's designed by somebody with a vast real life racing driving experience to go by. So that's the guy you'd want the, that opinion from. Yep, I agree. So, you know, when I first looked at this, I thought, oh gosh, is it even going to be comfortable? I mean, it's got the pedal rake. It's so down low on the ground. But once I got down in it and got everything adjusted, I found that it actually was fairly comfortable. And I'd forgotten how much I liked that sitting position. We've done so many rigs now over the last couple of years that it is definitely one of the best seating positions, racing positions that we've we've had as yeah. far as rigs go. Uh, you're definitely on the ground. That's definitely, uh, we'll get to the pros and cons, but I didn't think I was going to like it either, but I love it. I love the way the, you know, you have to get used to that pedal being out, but once you push it to that, it feels so natural. It, it, it just, sure. Yeah. You're not really stretching your foot out. And that was his whole logic behind it. Your brake should stop at vertical, not be stretching your foot to do braking. So. Yeah. Cause over a long distance, over a long period of time, that's going to start wearing on you. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about the VRC Mark II, the Bob Earl VRC Mark II. Uh, and we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to give you our pros and cons and put it on the rev scale. Welcome back to our review of the Bob Earl VRC Mark II. Daring Edge here with Sean Cole and time for some pros and cons, starting sure. with the pros. All right, well, we can start off, I mean, kind of looking back at our old review. A lot of the same things apply, starting with the seating position. This thing was designed by a race car driver. You've got your ass on the ground like in a real car. You've got your brake at the vertical apply point like a real race car driver would like it. So you gotta love that. Definitely one of the pros. Next pro, durable and compactable. Probably one of the smallest footprints of all the rigs we've reviewed. And we had an open house here at the studio and we had seven different rigs set up. And it's so small <laughs> that the VRC was sitting in the corner and John Hill, who actually owns the VRC Mark I, he didn't even know the thing was sitting here. Yeah, his own rig. So, so small and, yeah. and compactable. So, and very durable, like I mentioned. Yeah. Another thing for me is this shifter is in the perfect position and this one's working with the G27. We definitely could get a Thrustmaster shifter mounted on here and you got a Fanatic shifter on there last time as well. Yep. So that kind of ends it from the old. Now let's move into the new, like this $99 monitor stand. We got a monster monitor on here. It's free from the rig so you have no wiggle and great setup. Yeah, I, I like how it goes over the rig and you're able to pull it up. I mean, it's very lightweight you can see I can pull it right now with one hand in here but that's in my opinion one of the optimal spots for a monitor right up there sorry I'm kind of <laughs> no block, no problem I'm kind of blocking you there <laughs> uh, optimal place right up there on the end of your wheel Bob Roll allows that and it's really cool another pro is the more comfortable adjustable seat one of my complaints last time was that the seat back wasn't high enough and now it's definitely higher and also the addition of the Velcro ties and all the hardware to mount, that's definitely added to the pros list. And the last one for under $500, you have a nice rig and a monitor stand, so. That's true, that's very inexpensive for the complete package. You know, one thing I'm gonna remove from the cons list to the last review was the lack of keyboard tray. And the reason is, you're so close to the ground, you just put it on the ground. I mean, that's really not been a problem with this rig. Yeah, it's got a built-in keyboard tray and it's right there called the ground so yeah I agree it works great and you know how many rigs come with a mouse you know and, and when they do the mouse falls off anyway because yeah. the rigs moving so yeah. I agree we took that con completely off so speaking of cons I'll go ahead and get things really going with cons and keep in mind I am five foot five I actually had a hard time with this center post getting it far enough away from my feet so it wasn't in the way 
while I was trying to get the wheel where I wanted it to go. And no matter what I did, there was going to be a little bit of a compromise with wheel position or compromising my feet a little bit if I'm doing heel toe type work. Yep. Next one, the heel riser. That cushion is still too soft. Uh, last time I had mentioned a piece of wood would have been nice there. You know, I think a piece of wood with like some hard cushion, mm -hmm. you know, not the, the soft pillow, because that pillow is going to be toast after, <laughs> uh, you know, about six months of driving. So yeah. I, I would have liked a harder heel riser there because you really need it, you know, to yeah. be in that, in that proper racing position, you need that heel riser. Yeah. It, it's essential. And speaking of proper racing position, it kind of leads to my next con, which is the lack of ability to adjust the pedal plate angle. It is very heavily raked. And you know, Bob, you won me over with your argument for why it should be there. And I'd probably continue to drive that way. But I think some people are going to feel that it's just a little too raked. Yep, I agree. Uh, lack of adjustability to be able to move the seat forward and back, which actually leads to another con. Sean mentioned that there's these little uh, metal, what, what would you call them? Pins? They're pins like spring that, pins. Spring pins that pop out of holes when you slide it through the tube. It's got one here and it's got two on the bottom. Problem with the ones on the bottom, it's at full extension. Even at 6'4", I can't fit with them fully extended in that pushed in spot. Now, to push those both in and to slide it past that point so where you're tightening on the knobs is a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. So you have to flip the whole rig over. It takes two of us, really. I sure. mean, unless you're... It's just kind of a pain in the butt, so that that's kind of a con. So and no seat adjustability this way, which kind of hurt Sean mm -hmm. uh, putting that, you know, this post too close to the pedals there. Definitely, and that is a center post design. So that's another con. I mean, I kind of talked about the problems I was having with it, but as a con, it's a center post rig. Yep. So I think that's going to do it for pros and cons, which is going to lead us to our proper score this time. No more thumbs, and uh, Sean. Why don't you give it the score? All right, this score takes everything into consideration going on the old review, but looking at the Mark II, we have given this an eight out of 10. Yep. Sean was teetering a little bit too on, uh, we were actually, I was an, a solid eight, because pushed out, I have no problem with the, uh, which I guess is leading us to our final thoughts here. I have no problem with the center post with being 6'4". Um, Sean still gets a little close, but you can move the pedals back and forth. So he was able to race fine with it, and Absolutely. it definitely deserves an eight. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's a solid rig. And it's a very comfortable rig. That's the thing. Once I get down into it, I could spend hours in this rig. I got completely used to the pedal angle, and I actually, even though that was in my way as a center post, I didn't find it terribly in my way other than at the feet. Yep. So, You know, and I, just getting in and out of this thing, you know, I, I think I'm going to go out with getting in and out of here you know <laughs> i can i can pretty much climb over the seat and you know getting down here is not too bad but getting back up ugh, that, that's where it gets a little tough so yeah i think that's gonna wrap it up here sean i just roll out of the seat by the way yeah good you know just start putting on some weight man <laughs> just roll right out of that thing but yeah it, it's you know if you're not in decent shape and uh it may be tough to get in and out of that thing. That's going to be my final thoughts on it. Great rig, though. Thanks, Bob, for sending us everything, coming in and doing the interview for us and hooking us up with the monitor stand and the, and the whole VRC Mark II. And I definitely recommend it. I definitely would, too. And some good improvements and maybe a few more in the future. And we'll see what it looks like for the Mark III. Sounds good. For Sean Cole, I'm Darren Ganji. We'll see you next time.